In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. To prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass, we pause for a moment to call to mind our sins and also to formulate our respective intentions for this morning's Mass. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favour, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that, made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Doom for the shepherds who allow the flock of my pasture to be destroyed and scattered. It is the Lord who speaks. This, therefore, is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the shepherds in charge of my people. You have let my flock be scattered and go wandering and have not taken care of them. Right, I will take care of you for your misdeeds. It is the Lord who speaks. But the remnant of my flock I myself will gather from all the countries where I have dispersed them and will bring them back to their pastures. They shall be fruitful and increase in numbers. I will raise up shepherds to look after them and pasture them. No fear, no terror for them anymore. Not one shall be lost. It is the Lord who speaks. See, the days are coming when I will raise a virtuous branch for David, who will reign as true king and be wise, practicing honesty and integrity in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel dwell in confidence. And this is the name he will be called, the Lord our integrity. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. 
The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these, you give me comfort. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. In Christ Jesus, you that used to be so far apart from us have been brought very close by the blood of Christ. For he is the peace between us and has made the two into one and broken down the barrier which used to keep them apart, actually destroying in his own person the hostility caused by the rules and decrees of the law. This was to create one single new man in himself out of the two of them, and by restoring peace through the cross, to unite them both in a single body and reconcile them with God. In his own person, he killed the hostility. Later, he came to bring the good news of peace. Peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near at hand. Through him, both of us have in the one spirit our way to come to the Father. The word of the Lord. The gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles rejoined Jesus and told him, all they had done and taught. Then he said to them, you must come away to some lonely place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For there were so many coming and going that the apostles had no time even to eat. So they went off in a boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But people saw them going and many could guess where and from every town, they all hurried to the place on foot and reached it before them. So, as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd, and he took pity on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he set himself to teach them at some length. The Gospel of the Lord. As he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd and he took pity on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he set himself to teach them at some length. The one image that dominates the readings this morning is the image of the shepherd. We have it in the first reading. Do for the shepherds who allow the flock of my pasture to be destroyed and scattered. We have it in the responsorial psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. And then we have it once again in the gospel, where the good shepherd is portrayed in action. 
he took pity on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he set himself to teach them at some length. The image of a shepherd is one which most people in Ireland, particularly in rural parts of Ireland, can easily and readily understand. And yet maybe we don't fully grasp the meaning, the full impact of the shepherd image, because in our Lord's time, the relationship between the shepherd and his sheep was extraordinarily close. First, in the time of our Lord, the shepherd didn't just go out in the morning or in the evening to check on his sheep. He stayed with them. He stayed with them all day long and he stayed with them all night long. Secondly, at night time, he brought them into a sheepfold to protect them from wolves and other wild animals that had a highly developed taste for lamb or mutton. Thirdly, the shepherd did not drive his sheep. He led them. He walked in front of the sheep and they followed him. And fourthly, perhaps most amazingly of all, the shepherd knew each one of his sheep by name. So, the relationship between shepherd and sheep was one of knowledge, trust, protection, concern, and dependence. When our Lord speaks about being our shepherd, he is in effect telling us that he knows us, leads us, loves us, cares for us, protects us, and no matter what happens, he stays with us. In St. John's Gospel, he tells us, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. Now, all that our Lord says has many practical consequences. Let us look at just one. Our Lord does a lot of his shepherding through his church. Our Lord said to St. Peter, feed my lambs and feed my sheep. Our Lord appointed St. Peter as chief shepherd over all the faithful. Sometimes the church will lead us to tough pastures or point us towards a challenging diet which is not easy to digest. The church reminds us all that love is the first commandment, that forgiveness follows immediately from that, that justice is at the heart of the gospel, that Christian marriage is for life and involves not just certain marital rights, but also certain marital obligations. The church reminds us that abortion and euthanasia are both wrong because all human life is sacred and a gift from God. The church reminds us that sexuality is an expression of love, not lust. That sexual intercourse outside of marriage may well be understandable and forgivable, but certainly not Christian. Straight teaching, hard teaching. For some people, extremely difficult teaching. But a shepherd is not a soft touch and cannot afford to be a soft touch. Gentle, tender, understanding, loving, yes, but also responsible, responsible to Christ and responsible to the flock. 
That's how shepherds are expected to be. Putting priests to one side for the moment, parents and grandparents, just think of all the shepherding that you do, all the shepherding that you do of your children and grandchildren, showering them with love, giving them good example, giving them any amount of your time, protecting them from harm, giving them guidance on how to live as good, decent, honest citizens, supporting them emotionally, financially, and practically through school, college, or university. You are good shepherds. I just want to conclude with a prayer from the right of ordination to the priesthood, which has a particular resonance with me and should also resonate with parents and grandparents here this morning. Father, with your power and love, you guide us through the changes of time and season. Help us to use properly the gifts you have given us. Fill the hearts of your priest and people with love, that the shepherd may have a faithful people and the people a loving shepherd. Let us now stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now turn in prayer to God our Father. For those who are elderly or housebound, that Christ the Good Shepherd may be their hope, guide, and consolation. Lord, hear us. For a more equitable distribution of the world's wealth, and that we might all have a deeper appreciation of all we have. Lord, hear us. For all of us gathered here in St. John the Baptist Church this morning, that we may be receptive to the gifts of the Holy Spirit and be patient, kind, and gentle. Lord, hear us. For peace in those parts of the world where there is unrest at present, we pray that God may enlighten the hearts of all so that peace may be restored. Lord, hear us. For those ladies who have had babies recently, that both mothers and babies may be well and thriving. Lord, hear us. For those couples trying to have a child, we pray through the intercession of St. Jared Magella that their hopes, prayers, and dreams of a little baby may become a reality. Lord, hear us. 
for those couples who have married of recent times and for those couples preparing for Christian marriage, that God may bless all these couples and their preparations. Lord, hear us. For all who are traveling this weekend, that through the intercession of St. Christopher, all may have safe journeys. Lord, hear us. For all the children of our parish, that through the intercession of St. John Bosco, patron saint of the youth, they may be protected from all harm and danger over the summer holidays. Lord, hear us. For those who are poorly in mind or body, that through the intercession of Our Lady of Lourdes, they may experience the healing presence of Christ, the Good Shepherd. Lord, hear us. And for all who are suffering the consequences of the current coronavirus pandemic, that God the Father may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, comfort to families, and salvation to all the many victims throughout the world who have died. Lord, hear us. For all our deceased loved ones, we remember in a special way this morning, Vera McCoo, Samuel Greer, Marie Hamill, Maria Gama, Manuel Guterres Correa, Jaime Voon, all of whose anniversaries occurred today. We pray also for Gertie Elliott and William John Glass, whose anniversaries occurred this weekend. We keep in our prayers those who have died of recent days and weeks, commending to God's mercy, Sally Donnelly, Antoinette Keeney, Nee Jones, late of Belfast and formerly of Portadown, Jerry McAtee, Teresa Halfpenny, Patsy Lamb, and Sean Campbell. And our prayers are also requested this morning for the happy repose of the soul of Willie Lappin, late of Woodside Hill, who went to God on Friday, and a private committal service will take place with Requiem Mass being celebrated at a later date for Willie and all his loved ones. We pray that these deceased and all our own deceased loved ones may inherit the gift of everlasting life. Lord, hear us. Let us pray, God our Father, let us see ourselves as you see us, so that we may see you as you have promised. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. I just want to ex express thanks for those, to those who contributed to last weekend's offertory collection, which amounted to just over £1,660, with the standing order amount for the month standing at £837. And I'd also like to express thanks for the further recent donations of £200, £100, £50 and £25 towards the purchase of the new parish lawnmower. I am immensely appreciative of the generosity shown by parishioners towards this appeal. The members of St. Joseph's Young Priest Society would also like to express their gratitude for the generosity that they have received over the past year. The sum of £2,405 was collected and forwarded to headquarters recently to assist students in their education and training for the priesthood. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the local Knights of St. Columbanus for their generosity in gifting the parish with a new portable sound system for use in the cemetery for the final prayers at the graveside, which conclude the funeral rites of all our loved ones. And lastly, to express congratulations and Prayerful good wishes to Father Martin Loftus, SDB, Society of Don Bosco, Salesian Father, native son of the parish, on the occasion of his golden jubilee at the end of June. Ad multos annos, Father Martin.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honour of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, who is on the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you ac accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Eamon, our Bishop, Michael, his assistant Bishop, Sean, our retired Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, 
and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, life, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
The Lord, the gracious, the merciful, has made a memorial of his wonders. He gives food to those who fear him. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, with what protection today and every day. O angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits thee here, ever this day be at my side, to light, to guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Eternal rest, grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ.